These days, TV cancellations occur more frequently than a full moon, so Teen Wolf's almost animalistic perseverance has merit. MTV's soft remake of the 1980s film, which dates back to the time when series really ran for six seasons, was terminated in 2017 after a whopping 100 episodes. But as they say, you can't keep a good lycanthrope down, as Scott McCall and his pack have returned with the first of what may be many Teen Wolf movies, which takes place six years later. In fact, it appears as though Teen Wolf, the movie's director Jeff Davis is depending on it based on how the film finishes. How comes Crystal Beck? Due to a 16-year time leap in Teen Wolf, the movie, Scott is no longer a Teen Wolf. McCall is still the pack leader, but his group has dispersed and he is now in his mid-30s. But soon everyone will be back in Beacon Hills to battle Najatsune and assist Allison in crossing over to the other side. Yes, it is correct. After passing away at the conclusion of Season 3 all those years ago, Allison Argent has returned. In order to preserve their lost buddy, Scott, Lydia Martin, Jackson Whittemore, and other fans get together after discovering that her soul is unable to pass beyond. However, a number of paranormal mischief-making attempts backfire, and instead bring Allison back to life for the gang. But this Allison isn't quite our Allison. Without her memories, the dead hunter is Najitsun's easy target, and he uses her against the other hunters. Bring on the battles in the Wolfsbane. Eventually, Scott brings up something they previously discussed and Allison learns the truth, remember the winter formal. It was the first time I had expressed my affection for you. Now, even if her memories are still a little hazy, Allison quits wanting to murder Scott and begins to trust him instead. How is Najatsune doing? Scott's pack is being held captive by Najatsune for the most of the film in a shadow dimension that just so happens to be located next to Beacon Hills High School Stadium. Derek Daddy Hale and his son Lee are among those detained. That is, until Lee is thrown into the stadium during a lacrosse game by Najatsune. It's a major horrible act, but happily Lee manages to flee the game in time to inform Scott of what is happening to his father and the others. Adrian R. Harris, the unpleasant chemistry instructor nearby, has returned to capitalize on the otherworldly mayhem for his own evil ends. He shoots Jackson many times during a violent standoff, essentially holding Lydia prisoner and preventing her from rescuing the others. A force field has been set up around the stadium, keeping 10,000 people inside, as if that weren't troublesome enough. Scott, thankfully, has a thought. Scott's strategic plan. Scott comes up with the brilliant idea to don a lacrosse jersey and join the game because thousands of people might perish if the game is in halt. Without his abilities, the game may end in sudden death, extending the player's time on the field. Yes, truly. Oli, the new Teen Wolf resident at the school, contributes as well while sporting the same jersey number that Scott did back in the day. The others topside eventually follow Najitsune in the world below after a few confessions are made. Allison is rescued by Lydia during a crucial battle with Najitsune's Oni goons thanks to her banshee scream. You know, the one she has resisted using until now. Allison recalls everything at once after hearing her name screaming aloud bring on the endearing flashbacks to her time spent with Scott in Seasons 1-3. Scott's demise. Najatun threatens Lee with a knife after realizing he's lost the initiative and makes Allison an offer. Everyone will be let off the hook if she murders Scott. We think it's a little bit petty, but Allison concurs, stabbing her ex three times in the heart. However, it's all a deception, psych. Since Scott's internal fox fire causes the arrows to disappear, the conflict then resumes as Allison fires an arrow into Najatun's head. As a result, Jordan Hellhound Parrish is able to summon reinforcements down below by piercing the force barrier with his melty hand strength. Billy assists in releasing Derek and the other people that have been imprisoned for so long. Scott then assists father and son as they battle Najatsune together. But wait, there's more. In the Teen Wolf movie, Who Perishes? Najatsune captures the wolves and keeps them each contained in a distinct, color-coded space. Yes, the conflict is still ongoing, but at least it has moved. The illusion is quickly exposed, though, due to a perfectly timed wolf howl that synchronizes everyone once more. Harish is holding Najatsune down back in the shadow world and is prepared to put an end to him for good. But Derek steps in, giving his life to put a stop to this struggle since he isn't strong enough to do it alone. He tells Scott that Lee is now a member of his pack, and at that moment, both Derek and the cruel riddle guy burst into flames. In this movie, Derek comes close to passing away several times, but this time he is certainly dead. Nearly certain about it. Even a monument has been established in his honor. What happens in Scott's story? Scott introduces Derek's duty as the Alpha by describing their first encounter. Derek Hale was the first to inform me that you are not automatically given the family into which you are born. You end up with the family you find. After that, Sheriff Noah Stalinsky hands Lee the keys to his son's Jeep and makes a touching speech on perseverance, saying, All you have to do is keep it going. Simply keep going. And he'll keep it going. But first Teen Wolf brings us full circle by giving Scott and Allison a happy ending in which they reconcile and start a new life together. It's lovely and sweet, and it fulfills every wish of hashtag Scalison fans. However, there's still more. How Teen Wolf prepares for a sequel. When you believe Teen Wolf, the movie has howled its final howl. Adrian Harris is seen being arrested in the dead of night. However, he won't actually be entering a jail. 
Dr. Conrad Fenris seems to inform Adrian that he would be sent to Eichenhaus Psychiatric Hospital, where Fenris serves as chief medical officer, rather than a much more fitting prison institution. You would be mistaken if you believed the wonderful doctor was deceased. If or when another movie is released, viewers may look forward to seeing more of him and the paranormal creatures held imprisoned in his hospital in the future. When he informs Adrian that he has heard many tales of young werewolves in the past, Fenris himself makes an allusion to this. He then adds with a mischievous grin to the camera, there's always a new one, and the picture immediately turns to Lee gazing over Beacon Hills. The arrival of a new teen wolf suggests that Scott's reign as Alpha may soon be coming to an end. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.